Good evening. I'd like to call the Lucas sent me a message saying he can't get. I'd like to call the December 21st, 2020 meeting of the University Heights City Council to order. One moment. Mr. Kennedy, do you say Luke is having difficulty getting in? Yeah, he texted me and said he's having trouble logging in. I see. Yeah, we're going to want him, obviously. All right, let's uh, let's figure out what that problem is. We'll we will uh, try that again here in a moment. <laughs> All right. Okay. So everyone's ready now. Yep. All right. Uh, recording's on. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the University Heights City Council to order. Today is Monday, December 21st, 2020. Mrs. Thomas, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Blankfeld? Here. Mrs. Berry? Here. Mrs. Pardee? Mrs. Weiss? Here. Mr. Ertl? Here. Mr. Rock? Here. Mr. Gould? Here. Okay, very good. Uh, is there a motion to excuse Mrs. Pardee? So Some moved here. Okay. <laughs> motion by Mrs. Blankfeld, second by Mr. Ertl. Any discussion? Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertl? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Okay, very good. Mrs. Pardee is excused. Will all those who are able please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. We have a set of minutes from the last meeting, which was um, December 7, 2020. Are there any changes? And if not, is there a motion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have one change on page six, uh, paragraph two. Starts with Mr. Rock, who sits on the planning commission. That should be council liaison. Who sits on the uh, planning commission as the council liaison. Okay. 
Very good. Kelly, do you have that? Okay, very good. Thank you. Any other changes to this set of minutes? No, is there a motion to accept them as amended by Mr. Rock? I'll make the motion, Mayor. Okay, very good. We'll take the motion by Mr. Rock. Phil, is that a second? Yes. Second by Mr. Ertle. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mrs. Blankfield? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertle? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Okay, very good. Minutes are approved. We're now to item five, which is comments from the audience. Speakers are limited to five minutes. Total time allowed 15 minutes per meeting unless otherwise permitted by council ordinance number 91.25. Uh, is there anybody here this evening who would care to address the city? If so, please raise your hand. And when we recognize you, if you would state your name and address for the record, you will then have five minutes. I'm not seeing anybody raise their hand. I know that there are some members of the public here, Ms. Rollins and Mr. Weiss. Do you have anything that you want to address the city on this evening? Not, then uh, very good. We will, oh, I see. Oh, okay. Mrs. Rollinson, did you have something? No, I did not. Okay, very good. All right, well, welcome here all the same, of course. Thank you. Well, then, if there are no comments from the audience, uh, we will proceed then to reports and communications from the mayor and taking of action. Uh, out of the interest of time, I am going to dispense with a formal report and simply wish everyone a happy Hanukkah, a Merry Christmas, a happy solstice, a festivus for the rest of us, and, um, and a happy new year to all. And so. a happy Kwanzaa. And a festive Kwanzaa. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Michael. There's yeah. a lot of holidays this month. <laughs> there, there are, and 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 they're all they're all uh, worthy of observation, best we can, given the limits of the pandemic. So, so that concludes my report. Thank you. We'll then move to the agenda items. First item is item A, Ordinance 2020-62, enacting codified ordinance section. 276.11 entitled public meeting and notice for the purpose of providing civil service commission members with the right to establish a regularly scheduled monthly civil service commission meeting the date and time convenient for civil service commission members this is on second reading as the council will recall uh, we have discussed in an effort to um, better serve our, the city and and better facilitate the work for uh, police and fire departments uh, with respect to examinations and hiring and promotions and so on that uh, this would be facilitated if we were to establish a regular monthly meeting uh, for the benefit of, of uh, keeping a healthy pace of the work and for the convenience of the members of the Civil Service Commission so that they know to reserve a particular date each month for the purpose of meeting and much like planning commission, keep that date open until they've heard whether or not we have agenda items uh, for them to consider at that meeting. So um, this uh, was up for first reading this last time. Um, I know that uh, com the commission members, I understand, have um, uh, agreed that their monthly meeting date would be the, the second Tuesday of each month at 4.30 p.m. And when our clerk of council, Mrs. Thomas, releases the notice of meetings for 2021, uh, those Tuesday dates will be included uh, throughout so that the public will also have the benefit of knowing that that is generally when the Civil Service Commission will meet, at least as a regular meeting time, if there is business to conduct. So I want to thank our Civil Service Commission for uh, their cooperation um, in 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 uh, choosing a date and uh, committing to that. I wanna thank Mrs. Thomas for working with them to help get that done. Uh, 
Mr. McConville, is there anything you'd care to add with respect to the ordinance? Very briefly, Mayor, just that um, this ordinance uh, is similar to the Planning Commission ordinance that was adopted a couple of years ago in an effort to have a regularly scheduled meeting and thereby avoid any difficulty um, scheduling Civil Service Commission meetings when there's business to be conducted. All right, very good. Thank you, Mr. McConville. Are there any questions or discussion? And if not, is there a motion? So moved, Mayor. I'll Very second. Good. We have a motion to adopt by Mrs. Weiss, second by Mrs. Blankfeld. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Ms. Erdl? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Very good. Motion carries and ordinance 2020-62 is adopted. Next is letter B, ordinance 2020-63, authorizing temporary appropriations for current and other expenditures at the City of University Heights, Ohio for the period commencing January 1, 2021 and ending March 31st, 2021. This is on second reading. Mr. Kennedy, you have the floor, sir. Did we lose Mr. Kennedy? Looks like we did. Yes, he just texted me saying he lost his connection. This one's on second reading, so. It is on second reading. And uh, while there are other things that uh, Dennis will be uh, explaining later in the meeting, I, I think everyone is, is familiar with, <laughs> uh, with what item B is, that it is to make appropriations for the first three months of the year while we uh, uh, work on the uh, 2020 budget. Is there any questions or discussion with respect to that? And if not, is there a motion? Mayor, Mayor, let's make sure we read the title. Uh, so we've had our second reading. Oh, I thought I did. Okay, but I will do it again. Uh, Ordinance 2020-63, authorizing temporary appropriations for current and other expenditures of the City of University Heights, Ohio, for the period commencing January 1, 2021 and ending March 31st, 2021 on the second reading. And it doesn't say this, but this should also be on emergency, should it not, Mr. McConville? I uh, so so that it takes effect before the first of the year. It, it is on emergency, correct? Okay, very good. So on, but reading. we don't need to waive the reading rule. Correct. Right. So, is there a motion to adopt Ordinance Twenty Twenty Dash Sixty Three on emergency? Also moved. So moved, Mayor. Okay. I'll second. Very good. We have a motion by Mr. Gould, a second by Mrs. Blankfeld. Any discussion? Very good. Uh, Mrs. Thomas, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Erdl? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Okay, very good. Motion carries. Before we proceed, the next three items all involve Mr. Kennedy. Should we take the agenda out of order and allow Mr. Kennedy some time? He says he's having an unknown Zoom error and he's trying to reboot. Luke, do we need a motion to take agenda items out of order or can I as chair? Yes, you, okay. you, you do that by a motion. Okay, very good. Is there a mayor? I would move to uh, take uh, any items which Mr. Kennedy is required to, which I believe then are the next two or next three. 
next three. Uh, next, yeah. next three. I'd actually like uh, F also for Mr. Kennedy. So four. If we can oh, move okay. the next four items after the fifth uh, and, and just proceed to the, the item, what? G. E, uh, G. I would so move. Okay, so we have a motion to take item G next and then the next four items, C, D, E, and F. So Upon motion. Mr. Kennedy's return. Okay. Second. Very good. We have a second by. Mrs. Weiss, um, Mrs. Thomas, you please call the roll. Mrs. Blankville. Aye. Mrs. Berry. Aye. Mrs. Weiss. Aye. Mr. Erdl. Aye. Mr. Rock. Aye. Mr. Gould. Aye. Okay, very good. We are now on item G, which is ordinance 2020-6. Six, appointing Rachel Mullen as assistant clerk of council for the limited purpose of performing duties on behalf of the Civil Service Commission for the period of January 1, 2021 through June 30, 2021. And this is on emergency. Mr. McConville, uh, would you like to address the ordinance? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, th this is the ordinance that makes a, a temporary appointment of Rachel Mullen as assistant clerk. Uh, for purposes of performing duties in connection with the Civil Service Commission. Um, this is not a codified ordinance. Um, it will expire by its own terms at the end of June 30th. Um, and so prior to that point in time, a council can consider whether to extend the appointment or not. Uh, we've indicated that um, there's nothing in the ordinance that will be construed to um, contradict or alter the terms of codified ordinance section 220.09, which is the section um, that indicates that an assistant clerk shall serve at the pleasure of the clerk. Uh, but this is a limited appointment for particular purposes by law. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. McConville. Is there any discussion about this item? And if not, is there a motion? Moved. We, we would ask that the motion be on emergency um, so that um, Rachel can begin performing these duties on the first of the year. Okay. Very good. Move the ordinance 2020-66 on emergency. Okay, very good. We have a motion to adopt uh, ordinance 2020-66 on emergency by Mrs. Weiss. Is there a second? I'll second, Mayor. Second by Mrs. Blankfeld. Is there any discussion? Uh, before we take a vote, uh, uh, Mr. McConville, uh, Ms. Mullen is here uh, on the meeting. Um, though she doesn't take, would not take office till January 1, provided the ordinance passes, may I swear her in this evening here on the council record or should we wait until January 1? Either way works. Okay. Well then, maybe we'll do it now. Very good. Any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> All right, Mrs. Thomas, uh, will you please, uh, well, there's there's two votes here. First on the suspension of the rules. Mrs. Blankfield? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Erdl? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Okay, and then on the main motion. Mrs. Blankfield? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Erdl? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Okay, very good, the ordinance passes. Um, Rachel, would you raise your right hand and repeat after me? Okay. Okay. Aye. Aye. State your name. Rachel Mullen. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support the Constitution. To support the Constitution. And laws. And laws. Of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. The Constitution. The Constitution. And laws. And laws. Of the state of Ohio. Of the state of Ohio. 
And the charter. And the charter. And ordinances. And ordinances. Of the city of University Heights. Of the city of University Heights. In the office. In the office. Of assistant clerk of council. Of assistant clerk of council. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So long as I may hold such position. So long as I may hold such position. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> and we all look forward to getting to work. <laughs> <He's got it. laughs> all right. Very good. Uh, with Mr. Candy back, we can return to item C on the agenda, which is resolution 2020-64 uh, requesting the County Budget Commission to advance taxes from the proceeds of tax levies for the period of January 1, 2021 to December 31st, 2021 pursuant to section 321.24, the Ohio Revised Code. This is on emergency. Mr. Kennedy. Dennis, can I you keep hear? freezing up here? Oh, I see. I can't, but I, I now, Mayor. Um, this particular ordinance is an annual statutory requirement for us to request that the County Budget Commission advance us collections of property taxes during the tax year. So it needs to be filed by December 31st. And I would ask for your approval on emergency. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Are there any questions for Mr. Kennedy? If not, is there a motion to approve this uh, uh, resolution on emergency? So moved on emergency. So moved, Mayor. Okay, very good. We have a motion by Mrs. Weiss and a second by Mr. Gould. Any discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll first on the suspension of the rules? Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Erdo? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. And then on the main motion? Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Erdo? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Very good. Uh, resolution 2020-64 passes. Next is item D, ordinance 2020-69, authorizing permanent appropriations for current and other expenditures of the city of University Heights, Ohio for the period commencing January 1, 2020 and ending to December 31st, 2020 and declaring an emergency this is on emergency. Mr. Kennedy, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. This is, again, a statutory requirement. Um, it will put us in a position where our appropriations uh, pass the test of the Budget Commission at the end of the year, and they will issue a not to exceed appropriation statement to the city which is a key component of the audit. So the 2020 audit will be covered. Um, what this, the details of this particular measure are just adjustments to all the departments to make sure that they have enough appropriation, particularly in the area of payroll, because we have one more payroll to go before the end of the year. Um, but as I put a cover memo in the packet, um, the general fund is actually less, uh, considerably less than what we started the year at. The total for all funds is a little bit more that's because we added that $1.1 million for the CARES Act money that came in. Um, but filing this by December 31st will put us in a good position to have our audit um, without any issue next year. Hey, very good. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Are there any questions for Mr. Kennedy? And if not, is there a motion? I'll move, Mayor. Very good. We have a motion by Mrs. Blankfeld on emergency. Yes. Very good. Motion on emergency to adopt by Mrs. Blankfeld. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mayor. Very good. Second by Mr. Ertl. 
Any discussion? Seeing none, Mrs. Thomas, will you call the roll first on the suspension of the rules? Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertle? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. And on the main motion? Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertle? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Very good. Um, ordinance 2020-69 uh, is adopted. Next is item E, ordinance 2020-70, authorizing the advance of funds from the general fund 100 to the BCI FBI fee fund 214 in the amount of $5,000 and declaring an emergency. This is on emergency. Mr. Kennedy, you have the floor, sir. Thanks, Mayor. Um, again, this is a year-end correcting item. Um, the general fund is going to loan this fiduciary fund $5,000. That way, there is enough appropriation to cover all the expenses. Um, appropriations have to be supported by fund balance. We will then pay back that money. It's a timing issue between the billing that we get from the state of Ohio versus the collections that we get uh, from our police department. So we will repay that during the year next year and I'll make sure that is in uh, the 2021 budget. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Are there any questions for Mr. Kennedy? Mrs. Weiss. Thank you. Is this just for, uh, maybe this is more for Chief Rogers, the police department needing to get like fingerprints for a case or is this actual fingerprints that they're taking of people like new police and fire and staff? This is for um, a web check service that the police department offers to the general public for background checks, usually associated with employment. Uh, we offer this service where we would charge a fee to uh, the individuals that would be getting fingerprint and background checks done. And then the city is then billed uh, for the service by the state as well. Okay, do we, um, look, I think the fee is what, like 35 for a BCII and I forget exactly what the FBI is, but does the city make any money for like an administrative fee? Yes, just uh, generally speaking, the state usually charges uh, in the low 20s for each type of test and the city usually charges about 35 for each test. So it does cover the administrative fee or the administrative resource that would be needed for the fingerprint. Mm -hmm. And if a res is this only for residents? If they need a, a background check, they can make an appointment. It's not. It's for anybody. That would be required by their employer to get uh, fingerprints done. Okay. And then great. also, we we also use that platform for um, uh, criminal justice purposes. But there there wouldn't be no fees from the state associated with that. Okay. Great. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Are there any other questions or discussion? Is there a motion to adopt ordinance 2020-70 on emergency? So moved. Motion by Mrs. Weiss. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mrs. Blankfeld. Any discussion? Mrs. Thomas, will you uh, take the roll first on the suspension of the rules? Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertle? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. And on the main motion. Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertle? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Very good, motion carries. Next is ordinance 2020-65 providing for paid emergency administrative leave and allowing the mayor or his designee to temporarily expand the use of existing paid sick leave and declaring an emergency. This is on emergency. Mr. McConville, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. This uh, ordinance is similar to an ordinance we passed earlier this year. It would allow 
uh, it would afford um, an additional 80 hours of administrative leave um, to uh, the city's full-time employees to be used um, in the event of an absence that was due to COVID. Um, in addition, the ordinance, um, as the previous ordinance did earlier this year, would afford the mayor um, the discretion to um, allot additional paid administrative leave to employees who um, had a COVID-related absence but had no other um, accrued paid time off. Okay, very good. This replaces uh, an ordinance that would be expiring at the end of this calendar year, correct? Yes, the ordinance passed earlier this year expires um, December 30th. Very good, thank you. Any uh, questions about this ordinance, Mrs. Weiss? Yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to, um, a couple of things. What was the date that we originally passed this ordinance? Was it in like March and April or April? I think it was in April. So is what? this is this taking into account that there's FMLA COVID nineteen um, relief right now for organizations that is eighty hours? So we want to do and that was I don't I don't think that was available when we passed this originally because Correct. that's the law right now. I believe the FFCRA benefits also expire as of the end of the year. So I know there's talk about um, extending that. There, there is, so, there, you're correct about that. So I'm just hesitant to pass this now if, if that, you know, if that's going to be extended. I, I thought it was extended, Luke. Was that not extended at the, the bill passed yesterday? Um, I, I thought it was not, but I could be mistaken, Justin. I, I thought that they left out um, benefits relating to uh, municipalities, but that might have been in the in the uh, vein of CARE Act, CARES Act um, funds. Just a question for Mr. Kennedy: Do you can you ballpark how many of our employees use that? FMLA COVID relief? Like I assume we're using that first before we give extra days out of our own pocket, right? Right, we do code those leave times separately on the payroll. Um, off the top of my head, I do not know what that is. I can look it up and tell everybody before the end of the meeting if um, that would help. Thank you. Probably been, if I had to put a guess on it, probably eight to 10 people that have taken advantage of it. Um, but I, I'd have to look up the details. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would also add that we initiated this originally prior to the CARES Act funding being there for this, uh, simply as a matter of public health and making sure that we were encouraging our employees to not come in if, if they had a diagnosis or had reason to believe that they, you know, uh, you know should be quarantined. So um, we've had enough cases of COVID here uh, in city government that I would not want to do anything that would be a disincentive to, to uh, continuing that course of action when people have been exposed or have been told that they should uh, quarantine or self-isolate. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with How you. Does this... I, I just want to get clarification on, on those couple of things. Okay. And how does this differ uh, from the, there was administrative leave in March that I believe was not by ordinance. Dennis, I'm referencing communication from you at the end of April, 2020, uh, that since March, the mayor has awarded over $17,000 for 720 hours of administrative leave to members of the housing and building department. Is this a separate type of leave than that type of leave? 
administrative leave? Yes. And and how are those two things different? Why why do we need a an ordinance if there's already the ability to do that? I, I just wanted to understand the different I, types of leave that we would then have. Uh, I I have some recollection of that, and and Dennis, if if um, you want to fill in any blanks or or if you disagree with my recollection, please chime in. But um, my recollection is that. Uh, there was um, administrative, paid administrative leave that was awarded, um, but it was done um, initially without there being any policy or law in place. And that um, one of the things we were concerned about is making sure that any um, past action and or um, future action was um, in connection with a council appropriation. So that council was approving um, the use of funds for paid administrative leave in the kinds of circumstances that um, just as an example, building department employees were faced with, um, you know, where they were being asked not to come into work, but they were able um, you know, it wasn't because of their, they were sick or anything like that. They just were being asked to stay away. So, so I mean, I think it was a dual purpose. I think there was um, the desire on the one hand to, per, you know, to not be in essence laying folks off, um, but also wanting to make sure that the auditor was not gonna have a concern about amounts that had already been paid to employees who we're being asked to stay home. So, you know, now that, you know, we passed this original ordinance in April, March or April, and now that we know a lot more about this issue, um, I think it's good practice to be able to say, no, you need to quarantine. And Unfortunately, sometimes people have to quarantine multiple times because they're exposed multiple times and, you know, they could be at work. They could be at work and, and have to quarantine then be back at work for a month and then are exposed again. And, you know, I agree that we need to give the flexibility. I do think we need to put something in that says I need a, I need a doctor's note that says I've been exposed to, to COVID or, you know, I, you know, I tested positive just so we have that backup um, and people aren't abusing it. Um, I'd like to add that language in if we pass it again. Is that possible? That's just a question for the law director. That is possible, yes. And Luca, I'd like to better understand, you know, I guess by next time we, we have this on just the kind of a, a an outline of the available federal programs that will apply to us. I, I know it's been so confusing. Uh, I've been trying to keep up on it for nonprofit purposes. You know, what was added to PPP, how it was extended, what was taken out at the last minute. So just understanding what exists going into the new year. Um, generally, you know, I never want one of our employees who who may have had exposure to come in. Um, that's a, a I think a, a commitment not just to that individual employee, but I think one that we should make to to our employees in general that we're going to keep the workplace safe. Um, I, I have concerns financially about the other type of administrative leave. That is when a department is unable to work um, because of uh, conditions on the ground um, and rather than utilizing federally available uh, programs which would supplement income in the event of a layoff um, that the, the citizens of the city absorb the costs of that department not working for a period of time. Uh, that to me um, is, is a different situation and, and one which I have a little bit more of a concern. Uh, so I think understanding the different federally available programs for this um, would be something that I, I'd want to understand. So thank you. The last question I think we just need clarity on is if this FMLA is renewed, 
does the 80 hours start over or is it just a continuation of the 80 hours? I never received clarification in my own, you know, organization about that, that I, you know, that I work for. So if we could just get clarification, does the new year mean there's new 80 hours or you only take it once and you're done? Well, I think there are two different issues there. One is um, what is the nature of the benefits um, if extended under the um, stimulus package? Um, that would be one issue. I think that's the issue that Mr. Gould was just asking me to clarify um, prior to the next meeting. Um, the other issue is what about the city's 80 hours that were granted by ordinance earlier in the year and that ordinance by its terms was to expire um, on December 30th. So there wouldn't be any carryover of paid administrative leave from the city for any employee who hadn't used it during 2020. Um, but what, but there could be, there could be overlapping benefits between paid administrative leave provided by the city on the one hand and newly um, extended benefits under the stimulus, stimulus package under the FFCRA. And I think that's what um, would need to be clarified. Well, not just that, but if you used it in 2020, the CARES 80 hours, does that carry over or is it new in 2021? Not just the city benefits, the CARES benefits. What happens if you use your 80 hours in 2020, right? Now you get, now you used it for quarantine or you have a child that's sick with COVID. Now do you get it again if you get it in 2021? So now you have, you know, you're, you're asking through the city? That's separate. I mean, the city's separate, right? So you can have the CARES 80, and then we're saying you can have up to another through the city if, if you need it. But I guess my question is, does the CARES carry over or is it, is it, you know, you used it in 2020, you're done. You can't use it in 2021. I would think that, I mean, I would think the CARES is governed by the federal, right. what, what they write. So that, but the way um, this ordinance reads, the mayor comes up with rules. It says the mayor, or is it may adopt rules and regulations regarding the authorization of additional paid administrative leave. So yeah. that seems like it's going to be different. and it seems like it's gonna be the mayor that's gonna come up with these rules. Like do right, right. But my question is my 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 thought process will be different if in 2021 somebody needs to use 80 hours of CARES um, leave when they already used 80 hours in 2020. The city one is separate. I guess my question right now is the the federal. Right. But so if it's not, if it's part of the new or more recent stimulus act, is it just a clean slate and you have the opportunity again in the new year? That's that's my best guess as to what it would be because what, remember there, there's a difference between the CARES Act, which was an act that was essentially doling out dollars to among other um, people or entities, municipalities, and then the FFCRA, which was the Families so, First Coronavirus Relief Act. Yes, and that- so what that was doing was it was mandating that employers subsidized um, an additional set of FMLA benefits. So I misspoke. I, I didn't so, mean CARES. I meant yeah. the FMLA. So I, I knew what you meant. Um, but for purposes of our discussion, I think the answer is that beginning in 2021, you would have new FMLA benefits. But the reality is that it really depends on what our policy is. Some employers calculate FMLA based on a calendar year. So every time the, the calendar rolls over, new, a new set of benefits um, is presented to all employees. And then other employers calculate it based on the individual employee's 
anniversary of employment. And so I'm not sure what we, how we do it. My guess is we do it by calendar year because it's so much easier administratively. Calendar year. And so it's likely to be the case that um, if the um, FFCRA, FMLA benefits have been extended that the calendar year would sort of, you know, refresh those for all of our employees. So if they had taken, you know, FMLA benefits under FFCRA in 2020, they would have the same opportunity to do so in 21. Okay, so I, I would like to um, amend this, this ordinance for two things then I guess. One is that the FFCRA leave is used first and that if the city has to approve additional hours beyond the 80 FFCRA that there's documentation from a medical doctor that um, they need to be home. Would you include the County Board of Health as sufficient for that documentation? Well, the County Board of Health would only be notified if they got a positive test. Right. It wouldn't be from a, it, it would, that wouldn't, that wouldn't necessarily say that they have to be quarantined. They wouldn't no. know that because. They would only know that because your organization reported it. Like I had to be quarantined because we were waiting to see if I had a positive <laughs> test, which thank goodness I didn't, but I had to be out of, and so my physician said, I'll send you a letter. <coughs> but then it's, it's the organization for which I work that notified the Board of Health when there's a positive test or right. not. When I was quarantined, we notified the Board of Health who then ordered me to quarantine. The, the city did, as your employer? The city did. Yeah. Yeah, there was no physician involved at that point. So I didn't have a doctor's note, but I had the order from the Board of Health. I think most people you would get it from your doctor and you would bring it to your employer saying, hey, or send it to your employer saying that I have to be out. And that would be the, the, uh, the mm -hmm. documentation, the backup to your being able to use that paid time, right, Luke, or no? Well, I, I think it's happening in a variety of ways depending on the employer. Um, a lot of employers are encouraging their employees not to come into the workplace if they're- Correct demonstrating any symptoms um, or if they've been exposed to someone who has COVID. So um, I, I can envision a lot of circumstances where someone would essentially know they have to quarantine without ever having seen a doctor. For example, their child comes home from school and, you know, turns out they have COVID. Um, well, they're, they're likely um, facing exposure and, and sh you know, should quarantine. I don't know that they need a doctor's note to, to know that they should quarantine in those circumstances. There, there are other... In that, in that circumstance, it would be a pediatrician letter. That's an easy one. Yeah. It's not so much that they would know to it. It's that they could verify to their employer that there is a real need for them to do that. I'm not suggesting that any of our employees would take advantage of this, um, but there, well, the seems to be a way, there seems to be something you have to have some kind of backup instead of just saying, hey, I don't want to go to work for a couple of weeks. I'm going to say I was exposed. Well, that's not happening. And no, it hasn't. But I'm just saying, I don't know how many times you want to end up paying somebody to be out for 40 hours or 80 hours. Right. Well, we don't want to have to do it at all, but we're in the middle of a pandemic. And the thing is, is we are working with the County Board of Health throughout all of this. And, and, and for every one of these absences that we've had, we have had backup. And the idea that we don't is bullshit. Excuse me? I mean, the, we Excuse have backup me? for all of the absences that we have had due to COVID. And, and, and the, the idea that we don't or that, or that we need to put this into the ordinance when we've been doing it all along, I, and, and the idea that people are faking it or white fake it. I, I specifically said I didn't think that any of our employees might. However, the city has to protect itself financially. 
I did not imply that any of our employees had. That was not the implication at all when I mentioned that. Thank you. At all. No. It was just. I don't know that. where that came from. So we have backup when we have to pay people. It's in their personnel file. That's we all. Backup all, all the all intention was when I mentioned all along. it. Okay, good. But so then. Let's well, that start. would be a wonderful We're thing to outline to council. The policy in the ordinance. All right. Well, where it says that that there will be rules and regulations the mayor is authorized to adopt regarding the authorization, we are doing all these things. And, and that would be something to outline to us as we're considering the ordinance that came before us this evening. So mm -hmm. I see in, in the packet that we have, I see nothing regarding those regulations. I see nothing regarding the backup documentation that you're already keeping. Mm -hmm. I So when these questions are asked, it seems as though the administration and council are in agreement as to the need for these things because the administration is already doing it. And so while I appreciate, uh, you know, you sticking up for your employees, simply asking these questions, um, it would seem more appropriate to, to provide the information about what's already being done so that council can uh, come to a come to a conclusion on it. Um, uh, rather than suggest that the idea that, that we would have backup would be uh, somehow uh, disparaging to our employees. Yeah. Okay, so again, I, I would just like to, I, I have no problem because this is, this is an emergency. Mm -hmm. I have no problem making a motion on emergency to pass ordinance 2020-65, but amending the ordinance that's written to say the FRCRA, I'm sorry, what's the, what's the acronym again? FFCRA. As a matter of order, you'll need to amend before you make a motion to adopt, I think. Mm -hmm. So we need, we need the motion to amend first. Okay, so I want to make a motion to amend ordinance 2020-65 to add the FFCRA leave needs to be used first and a and documentation of um, quarantine or positive results needs to be documented. Okay, that's agreeable. Is there a second? I'll second. Very good. We have a motion by Mrs. Weiss and a second by Mrs. Blankfeld. Any discussion on the motion to amend? Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertle? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Nay. Hey. Okay, very good. Amendment carries. We now have the ordinance 2020-65 as amended. Is there a motion to adopt or is there further discussion at this point? The only thing that I'd like to add is if the law director can give us the final ruling on, you know, if, if the law director can find out if that was passed or not. The FFCRA piece. Yes, I mean, I, I will clarify that for you. Okay, very good.
Are we waiting for something, Mayor? I don't know. Is there a motion? I thought maybe you were asking with Luke to clarify that now before we proceed. Oh, no. Not okay. now. Well, then, is there a motion? It, 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 appears, it appears that the FFCRA benefits have been um, extended in some fashion, but I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what the parameters are. That's, that's fine. Very good. Thank you, Mr. McConville. Is there further discussion or is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Very good. Uh, is that a motion to adopt on emergency, Mrs. Weiss? On emergency. Very good. Thank you. Motion by Mrs. Weiss on emergency. Second, I think, was by Mrs. Berry. Yes. Very good. Second by Mrs. Berry. Any discussion? Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mrs. Blankville? Aye. I'm sorry, for, there's two votes here. First on, on the suspension of the rules, Mrs. Thomas. Mrs. Blankville? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Ms. Ertel? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Nay. Very good. Then on the main motion. Mrs. Blankville? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertel? Aye. Mr. Rock. Aye. Mr. Gould. Nay. Okay, very good. Motion carries. Next is, we already did item G, so next is item H, Ordinance 2020-67, placing a moratorium on implementation of the new building department fees and temporarily adopting the prior building department permit and fee schedule. This is on emergency. Uh, as the council's aware, we are in the process of converting the building and housing department's operations to the citizen serve program. The program we've been using is a program called Franklin, which is no longer being meaningfully supported by the vendor. Franklin was bought out by a competitor. They are providing minimal to no support at this juncture on the Franklin program. Trying to reprogram the Franklin program to even do something as seemingly simple as adjust the fees uh, would be far more trouble than it is worth if, if, if even possible, which it may not feasibly be. Uh, we will be uh, implementing the citizen serve program in the new year. And it makes far more sense at this point administratively to, uh, to have the new fees in the building department coincide with the citizen serve program going live. We do not yet have a firm date for that, but we do anticipate that happening in the spring, probably around May. Uh, but that said, placing a moratorium on the implementation fees would be appropriate. Uh, so that we don't have an audit issue with respect to not being able to charge the new fees while we catch up in implementing uh, uh, programs that allow us to collect those fees. Thus, we have uh, Ordinance 2020-67 before us, and uh, we'd ask then for a motion and for it to be adopted on emergency. Are there any questions? So just no, to just be clear, this is just for the increase in fees, correct? Not you're not putting a moratorium on fees in general. Oh, no, no. Just, no. just to, to continue to charge the previous fees or the current fees until such time as they have the new system in place. That is correct. Yeah, it makes sense. And having two new people on board that are learning the system, which will be great because they'll be fully integrated and using it because that's what they were trained on. Mm -hmm. um, it makes sense. Yes, thank you. Also move, Mayor. Okay, very good. We have a motion to adopt by Mrs. Blankville. Is there a second? Oh, and that's on emergency. Yes, Mrs. Yes, Blankville? On emergency. Thank motion you. on emergency by Mrs. Blankville. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Berry. Any discussion? Okay, Mrs. Thomas, uh, will you call over the roll first on the suspension of the rules? Mrs. Blankville? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Erdl? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. 
Mr. Gu, your vote. Sorry, I was muted. Aye. Thank you. Okay, and then on the main motion. Mrs. Blankville. Aye. Mrs. Berry. Aye. Mrs. Weiss. Aye. Mr. Ertle. Aye. Mr. Rock. Aye. Mr. Gould. Aye. Very good, motion carries, thank you. Next is item I, Ordinance 2020-63, enacting and supplementing the 2020-S17 supplement to the codified ordinances of the City of University Heights, Ohio. This is on emergency. Mrs. Thomas, would you care to discuss this item? Yes, this is our, we pass this ordinance annually and it's for our codified ordinance books and it allows the codifier to place this page that we are in agreement with allowing them to be our codifier for the upcoming year. This is standard protocol per the codifier. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mrs. Thomas. Any questions on this? Any discussion? And not, um, is there a motion to adopt on emergency? So moved. Very good. Motion to adopt on emergency by Mr. Ertel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Weiss. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mrs. Thomas, will you take the roll first on the suspension of the rules? Mrs. Blankville? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertel? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould. Aye. And on the main motion. Mrs. Blankville. Aye. Mrs. Berry. Aye. Mrs. Weiss. Aye. Mr. Ertel. Aye. Mr. Rock. Aye. Mr. Gould. Aye. Very good. Ordinance is adopted. Thank you. Next is item J, motion approving emergency IT support and service for a period of two months from January 1, 2021 to February 28, 2021 from Starfish in an amount not to exceed $8,000. I'll go ahead and take this one. As, as most of you are aware, the Tech Advisory Commission put together an RFP. We have uh, uh, obtained bids. The Tech Advisory Commission will not be meeting until after the first of the year to review those bids. In the meantime, our current IT services expire at the end of this month. Uh, we went ahead and uh, obtained a bid for uh, the next 60 days of the first, well, basically first two months of the new year uh, to afford us uh, no lapse of, 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 um, of IT services uh, while the Tech, Commission, Tech Advisory Commission proceeds with its work. Uh, the $8,000 that, that we're being quoted here is similar and in line with uh, the previous months. And uh, we would simply ask then that, uh, uh, that the council approve and allow Starfish to continue through the end of February 28 while Tech Advisory Commission uh, continues its process. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion to approve the emergency IT support and service for the period of two months from January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021 from Starfish in the amount not to exceed $8,000. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Rock. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Berry. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Mrs. Thomas, we call the room. Mrs. Berry? Uh, aye. Mrs. Blank Mrs. Blankfeld? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertle? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Oh, very good. Motion carries. Next item is item K, motion accepting health insurance rates for the city employees. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, you have the floor, sir. Dennis, are you with us? 
Mr. Kennedy appears to be frozen, at least on my screen. Maybe that's better. Mr. Kennedy, we have gotten to item K on the agenda. Are you prepared to uh, speak on this item? That's the motion to accept uh, health insurance rates. For the can you can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. Okay. I'm having many problems with the connection. I think it's something with our firewall. I'm not sure, but anyways, um, this item relates to a proposed renewal for health. Insurance for the employees, it's from Medical Mutual of Ohio, who is our current provider. The increase represents 7.9% from last year's rates. That equates to approximately $97,000 annually on the contract value. That, of course, is based on the current census. So if people come or go or drop off or change programs, that amount will be subject to change. But ballpark estimate for discussion purposes, it's 97,000. Uh, the employee share of that would be roughly 13%, which is about $12,500. Um, we are proposing because of all the various complications we experienced this year, particularly with COVID, um, logistical issues with getting the healthcare committee together for the collective bargaining units. Um, the mayor's asked that we propose that the administrative cost that's usually passed on to the employees be absorbed by the city. That would be that 12,500. And that we formally cap uh, the employee contribution rates uh, for 2021 at their current level. We did get alternative pricing from a couple other carriers. Unfortunately, our plan has evolved into kind of a custom-made program. Um, I think next year we should start considerably earlier. We, I did ask um, our consultant to get pricing in late September. They had an administrative change on their end that put them behind. Then I missed um, about a month of work, and things got fairly complicated at that point. But um, there's probably some margin for improvement, but again, that's all based on what the claims are. We had two fairly high um, claims this year that are projected to carry over into 2021. And I think 7.9% uh, based on the numbers that I saw would be a reasonable increase um, given the significance of those two claims. I'd be happy to answer any questions from anybody. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Mrs. Weiss. Yeah, I just wanted to say that that's a pretty good renewal in light of the, uh, the climate right now. And I'm happy that the city um, was able to acquire this. Um, you know, we also have to remember this is really the finance director's first full year. Um, and, you know, next year, I think will even be smoother. Very good. Thank you, Mrs. Weiss. Any other questions or comments? Okay, is there a motion to, uh, how should we couch this motion? There's suggested language here. We have it as the agenda's motion accepting health insurance rates for city employees. That's fine. Okay. Very good. Is there a motion to accept the health insurance rates for city employees? So moved. Very good. Motion by Mr. Erdl. Is there a second? I'll second, Mayor. Second by Mrs. Blankfield. Any discussion? Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mrs. Blankfield? Aye. Mrs. Berry? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ertl? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Okay, very good. Motion's adopted. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, next then is item L, motion hold executive session immediately following this regular meeting for a purpose of discussing personal, legal, or real estate matters. The administration has nothing this evening for which it would require an executive session. And if there are no other matters, then we can move on from this item to the record. Director of Finance, Mr. Kennedy, do you have a report this evening? Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I tried to send out all the financial reports for November last week, um, just working to get caught up. Um, we are in pretty good shape to end the year in a fairly favorable position. Um, we're starting to work on different components of the budget and look forward to starting that process with the um, committee in the first week of January. I'll have final tax numbers from Rita probably by the end of this. This week, they're just in the process of making last minute adjustments and refunds. Any collections that they make will not get posted to our account till um, January. We have to file with the county on or before December 31st. So that's on our schedule for the next week and a half is to get all those various things done. If anybody has any questions about the particulars of anything contained in the revenue report, the expense report, um, the statement of cash, uh, the investment portfolio, we will start moving some money from our operating fund um, to the investment portfolio over the course of the next week to 10 days. So um, I had previously giving you some information on that and we'll start making those adjustments prior to year end. Um, so with that, I just like to say thank you for everybody passing everything tonight. Much appreciated and happy holidays and stay safe to the end of the year. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Are there any questions for Mr. Kennedy? Okay, very good. Thank you. It's good to have you back, sir. Next is Director of Law, it's Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to apologize to members of council and the mayor for being late um, this evening. I, I don't know what was happening with Zoom. I was uh, logging in the number on the agenda and it kept telling me that it was not a valid number and then suddenly it worked. So I apologize for my delinquency uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, I will have uh, a memo out to members of council on um, whatever renewals or extensions um, are set forth in the um, newly adopted federal stimulus package um, related to FFCRA or any other employee benefits. Um, mm -hmm. I'm working on numerous issues for the city would be happy to take any questions that anyone might have um, or talk to anyone offline. Um, and other than that, I would just like to wish everyone happy holidays. Thank you, Mr. McConville. Happy holidays to you too. Any questions for Mr. McConville? All right, very good. And we'll move on to public safety, police, Chief Rogers. Thank you, Mayor. I have no report tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Chief Perko, fire. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Uh, one item to report tonight. Uh, Cuyahoga County Fire Chief Association has been working diligently with the County Board of Health, as well as the Ohio Department of Health um, for the first round of COVID vaccinations. Uh, the EMS providers in the fire department are grouped into the phase 1A, which is the first round of vaccinations. Um, these are gonna be distributed in three county uh, points of distribution uh, at three fire department locations, uh, east, south, and west. Uh, the east side location is gonna be held at the Shaker Heights Fire Department next week. And um, I'll be participating in a group of east side fire chiefs to organize that event with the county and 
collaborate with them on how we are going to determine who receives the vaccinations, if there is such a limited amount, as well as how we're going to be administering them. Uh, it seems as of today that it will be paramedics within this region that do the actual administration uh, in conjunction with the uh, County Board of Health Representatives. So a very uh, fluid situation, but excited to um, work with them to get this provided to our members. And uh, this will just be the beginning uh, as we move forward through the various phases in the state. That's all I have to report. Wish everybody uh, a happy new year as well. Okay. Thank you. You too, Chief. Any, any questions for Chief Perko? All right. Very good. Uh, service. Uh, Mr. Corny is on vacation, has been excused from the meeting, and he has no report. Um, that takes us then to the city engineer, Mr. Chuni. He was here earlier. He seems to be off now. I don't believe he had a report, though. Okay. All right. Uh, communications of engagement. Mr. Cook is on vacation, has been excused from the meeting, and uh, economic development. Ms. Drucker is on vacation and also excused from the meeting. So that brings us to the council standing committees. Uh, building housing. Mrs. Blankfeld. No report, Mayor. Very good. Uh, community outreach. Mrs. Purdy is absent, but she asked that it be conveyed that on January 11th at 6.30 p.m. there will be a community outreach committee meeting and that Cleveland Mediation Center's uh, Danielle Cosgrove will be joining us for that meeting to discuss the ongoing um, efforts at a uh, city uh, neighborhood uh, mediation program. And if there's anybody else from the committee who has anything they'd care to add at this point? All right. Uh, economic development, Mr. Rock. Yes, Mayor, we had a meeting last week on Tuesday um, to discuss the RFP for the new zoning code. And um, our committee met and basically gave our just our last uh, suggestions on how to uh, update the RFP. So that'll be going out in, I think, January, um, if not February but that's uh, gonna come before council first. So that's what our committee did last week. Yes, yes, a very exciting development coming out of the committee. And uh, thank you, Mr. Rock and all committee members as well as uh, Mrs. Strucker for her strong work uh, on drafting the RFP. Was there anything further, Mr. Rock? No further report. Okay, very good, thank you. Finance, Mrs. Weiss. Yes, thank you. There's a finance committee meeting about the budget on January 5th. Um, there is also a subcommittee of the strategic planning committee on January 11th. Okay. Uh, do we have times for those meetings? Um, the finance meeting is at seven and the strategic planning commission meeting is at 7.30 right after the Community Outreach Committee at 6.30. Ah, yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mrs. Weiss. Recreation, Mr. Ertl. No report, Mayor. Hey, thank you, Mr. Ertl. Safety, Mrs. Berry. No report. Thank you, Mrs. Berry. Service Utilities, Mr. Gould. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we've had two sessions learning more from our, our citizens what they uh, wanted to convey regarding the pickup of, of uh, solid waste in the city. What I'm doing now is working with a citizen in the community to come up with a survey to present to the committee uh, for citywide distribution. And uh, they've agreed to, to help and we're currently setting up a, a time to meet by Zoom. Uh, the goal would be to uh, create a document that could be uh, sent to or, or delivered to each resident or each household uh, in the city to gain feedback for council to use in making a final decision on the solid waste study. Other than that, nothing further to report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gould. Uh, Committee of the Whole, this is Weiss. Um, yeah, thank you, Mayor. I just actually have a comment. Um, regarding your 
um, the words that you spoke to Councilwoman Blankfeld this evening, no one should ever be spoken to as, crude, as crudely as you spoke to Mrs. Blankfeld. And I actually think that you owe her an apology. I think an apology is owed to every one of our employees who has suffered from COVID, the very idea that people here are faking it. No one suggested that. That was that exactly what you suggested. That was exactly what was implied by no, suggesting that, 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 that. That's that, ridiculous. That that's ridiculous. Take... No one ever said that. And yeah. in a public meeting, especially to, to, to talk the way you did was disgusting. It's not professional and it doesn't become you of the mayor of the city. No further comment. I stand with the city's employees, especially the ones that suffered from COVID. And, and I continue to be offended on their behalf. As a point of order, Mayor, that's the second time that you've used profanity towards this council in as many weeks. And, and, and you can stand behind your employees and, but also be respectful. I mean, that just, it just really just gives me a heavy heart because we should be able to agree respectfully to one or, another. Or disagree respectfully. Certainly all of us here respect and appreciate our employees of the city and our residents and no one suggested. But certainly if you are looking at potential outlay of funds, there is always the potential that that could happen. It's a business. The city is a business and you, have to look, and you have to look at all possibilities. I did not suggest that any of our employees who have been struck with COVID were faking. And as someone who's immunocompromised, the whole thing scares the living daylights out of me. And I have friends who have almost died from it. So yeah, it's, extraordinarily serious. No one's seen anything like this. And I did not, and I'll repeat it, I did not suggest that anybody had faked. That's all I'm gonna say. You did not suggest worth, uh, it's not worth discussing you any discuss further. Well you're free to stop anytime you like. Is there a motion to adjourn? Make the motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Rock. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Weiss. Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mrs. Blankfeld. Aye. Mrs. Berry. Aye. Mrs. Weiss. Aye. Mr. Ertel. Aye. Mr. Rock. Aye. Mr. Gould. Aye. Okay. Uh, Motion to adjourn passes. We'll be back on Monday, January 4, 2021 at 7 p.m. We are adjourned. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy holidays. <laughs>